Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Kopec, and I'm going to present here with my colleague Lukáš Pivovarsky uh, the topic about onboarding not only new contributors. And our focus of work. Oh, okay. Our focus of work is mainly upstream. We work with Tempest and interoperability related projects. And uh, however, in downstream internally at Red Hat, we help other colleagues to contribute upstream. Um, and that's what is inspired us for this presentation. So the presentation will have just three main topics. The first one is going to be about the decreasing trend we noticed in the OpenStack community. The second part will be about a uh, pool of tasks, and we will explain how it relates to all of this. And the last part will be basically about what should we do as a community. Yeah, so before we move to the main part of the presentation, we would like to start with a couple of graphs which showcase the trend in active contributors in OpenStack over the last eight uh, release cycles. Uh, all the data you'll see here are taken either from the Stackalytics or the official OpenStack website. So for example, here in this first graph, uh, you can see uh, that the number of active contributors is steadily decreasing. Uh, for example, if you take a look at the train release cycle, uh, you can see that the number of active contributors is almost double uh, to the number in the antelope release cycle. Um, the number of produced lines of code uh, with uh, each release cycle is slowly decreasing as well. So uh, as a community, we uh, probably uh, produce less and less code uh, with each release cycle. And uh, logically with that, the number of uh, commits and requ uh, feature requests is uh, going down. Uh, also, uh, the number of reviews needed for those changes is going do down, uh, both uh, by the regular users, but also by the core reviewers. Here's uh, an interesting graph, uh, which uh, shows the number of filled and uh, resolved bugs per each release cycle. You can see that both values are going down, uh, which uh, is good news, especially for the number of filled bugs, but uh, also the number of resolved bugs, which alone might seem as a bad thing, but definitely it is not the case, because if you take a look at the delta between those values, uh, it is decreasing as well, which means that we as a community uh, are able to uh, handle the, num the filled bugs uh, in a better way. Um, yeah, this, like one possible inter interpretation is that um, the OpenStack is uh, becoming more mature and solid. Okay, so now we saw a couple of key metrics going down, which probably might signal a bad thing is happening. This is definitely not the case here, right? Uh, as we saw, the number of uh, resolved and filled bugs is going down, which means more stable code. Um, also, the number of uh, you know produced lines of code is going down which might signal that uh, we are getting from OpenStack what we need and we do not need to write like new features and uh, modify it that much as we used to. And um, for the maintenance of the code, we probably need uh, fewer contributors. That makes sense, right? So this is not that important. What is important here for the following part of the presentation is that the pool of contributors is smaller. If you want to find a new contributor for your project, um, you can either take it from other project, then the person will miss there, or you can try to invest a tiny bit energy in finding new ones, and potentially if you invest this tiny bit of energy, it might have a high returns. So now Martin. Yeah, so OpenStack is becoming more and more mature, and as Lukáš mentioned, there is less and less active contributors around, but what can we do about that? Um, let's onboard not only new contributors. Like there are many people who work with OpenStack and they are not primarily focused on upstream. So maybe we can focus on those. Let's just use their time more efficiently and I will explain in a bit why. Um, internally, we did a small research and we asked our colleagues on the engineering level who work with OpenStack whether they would like to contribute upstream. And like every one of those said, yes, of course. Although when we asked them whether they contribute upstream more or less regularly, uh, 
almost 37 people said no. Um, what's interesting about this is that 71% of those people who said no would find a pool of tasks easier um, in order to start contributing upstream. And I will explain why. Um, but before that, can you think of any obstacles that might prevent people from contributing upstream? We asked those 36 people uh, why they said no, and we found three common obstacles. The first one was uh, people don't have enough time. They are too busy with their work, which isn't that much upstream focused. They, the other obstacle was that they don't know where to start. And the third one, they just can't find any task which would be relevant for them. Therefore, we did another experiment, and we created a pool of easier tasks. And under that, imagine tasks which are suitable as a as good first time issue, for example. Something which isn't very complex, something anyone can work on, regardless of their knowledge of that particular project. Um, we found that these four rules are very essential in, in order to maintain uh, the pool of tasks. The first one is that every task in that pool has to be very well documented. Uh, otherwise, people will just not be interested uh, because they don't have enough time. Um, steps to reproduce are a must. Um, another thing is definition of done. Every task has to have a set of conditions which if are met, the work on that task is done. Anything else is problem for another day, another contributor or and another task. The third thing is a mentor. Um, every task should have a point of contact, someone who gets notified when there is a question or when there is a page which should be reviewed. Uh, and the very important last thing or last rule is that the response time for both mentors and assignees needs to be really quick. Because if you remember on the previous slide, one of the obstacles was that people don't have time. So if a um, mentor is asked a question, they should really try to re address it um, ASAP. On the other hand, when an assignee is given a feedback or is given a uh, review on their page, uh, they should address it as, um, ASAP as well because we don't want to waste uh, mentor's time uh, too. Um, therefore, we did another experiment. We built basically on this pool of tasks and we created a program called Bootcamp. Everyone who's interested in upstream contributions uh, uh, can participate. Uh, we hosted a few sessions where we explained the theory about how upstream works, how to contribute there and, and so on and so forth. And then we asked every participant to pick a task from the pool and finish it. Um, one important thing to mention is that the participants were originally from two groups. One of the group was, uh, were people who contribute upstream more or less regularly, but they wanted to try a contribution to a different project. The other group was people who don't contribute regularly to upstream, but they wanted to try that. After a while, as we did this bootcamp thing a couple of months ago, and after a while, uh, we ask them a simple question. Do you feel like you participate more in upstream in any way, like reviews or patches or so? And what's interesting is that 27 people said yes. So those are the people we should be seeing in upstream sooner or later. Um, the yellow group, uh, they said, uh, I contribute approximately the same as I contributed before the bootcamp. It's like 36% of people. Um, but what's important about this is that those people were given a chance to contribute to a different project, were given an opportunity to escape from their regular stereotype and try something new, learn something new, and they finished a task. So the community benefited from that as well as, as they did. The red group, the last 36.4% of people, they said, no, I don't contribute more which means that, okay, we didn't change their habit to contribute to upstream regularly, but what's important is that they were able to finish at least one task from the pool, which means that the community benefited um, at the end. Plus, if you remember the obstacles, two of those three obstacles were about, I don't know um, where to start and I don't know how to find a task suitable for me. <laughs> and we basically so did, uh, did solve this for them. So in future, if they feel like 
they want to contribute to upstream again, they know how to do that. So I think it's a win as well. Yeah, so here's a feedback uh, from the participants of the bootcamp, uh, some few nice words. Um, so here you can see that if anything, the participants uh, uh, like get out of this experience the knowledge of how upstream operates. Uh, they got to know some people, so they have some contact point. If they ever will need to contribute in upstream themselves, they will need to implement their own change. They know someone they can contact and someone who will help them. Um, so yeah, they basic basically know where to begin and this might help them to decrease the friction in the future. So now, important slide. What do we want to do as a community with this? What do we want to take away out of it? Um, Martin outli outlined here some framework which uh, might be tailored a bit for upstream and you can try to also something similar in downstream. So we believe that in upstream, it would be really helpful if we as a community uh, tried to use the low hanging fruit tag more often. Um, I believe that you are all aware of the fact that Launchpad uh, offers that option that you can have a low hanging fruit tag for tasks and it would, it would be really helpful if we started to use that. Uh, together with the rules, uh, so it would be nice if each such a task would have clear definition of done so that the uh, uh, contributors are not frustrated when uh, working on such a task and also a mentor or point of contact who will help uh, the contributors when they are working on the, on the low hanging fruit task. Now uh, to the downstream part, uh, basically it would be helpful if you mimicked in some way uh, the thing Martin mentioned here. You can start your own version of bootcamp, um, which would uh, involve, for example, some presentation at the beginning of the bootcamp in which you would explain how upstream operates. And then you can create some pool of easier tasks. For example, if you work in Jira, you can create a dashboard with tasks which are linked to the launchpad. Um, and yeah, and then you can help the participants to um, implement their first uh, upstream patch. And we can profit as a community as a whole. Uh, we believe that uh, for people in downstream, this might also help them to prevent uh, burnout. For example, some people might uh, be stuck in the, some repetitive work and this might be nice to escape uh, and yeah, pretty helpful. Okay, so that's enough. So this is all from us. Um, if you have any questions, you can find us over there at the Red Hat booth. We will be more than happy to chat about this presentation or about anything else. So see you there. Well, we have almost two minutes. Um, yeah, so this is all from the presentation. If you should leave with one thing from this presentation, uh, that's this QR code, please feel free to scan it. It will redirect you to a page where we summarized all the facts we covered here today. Plus, there is some additional content we were unable to fit uh, into this presentation. Um, yeah, last thing I want to say is that um, please decrease the friction. It will definitely help to anyone. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? We have 60 seconds, so <laughs> we are still open for one question. <laughs> okay, so the question was whether it matters if the low-hanging fruit tasks are just bug fixes or feature requests. Um, I'm not sure if we had any feature requests there, but um, I don't think it matters. If, if the task is simple to follow, if it's not too complex, and if it doesn't require a huge deep dive into the project, I think it would work. It's just about the friction. If it's easy to follow if anyone who reads the task understands what, what is what it is about, um, that's a win. Thank you, we are out of time. <laughs>